Hey guys, it's me, Fatim, and welcome back to my channel. I'm saying this, like, here because I forgot to say it, but yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. For now. So the number one thing is recites Quran, because Quran on its own, so like, even outside of Ramadan, whenever you recite Quran, you get 10 good deeds for every letter, and there's a hadith that back this, backs this up, I'll put it on the screen, inshallah. Number two, pray extra salah because, all right, so in this month of Ramadan, the big old, like, the big bad, like, the big bad, I'm like doing like, I don't think you know, I never mind, you don't need to know what I'm doing, but the big bad shayateen are locked up, so there's a lot less people to be like, you can, okay, there's a lot less was was, you know? Let me fix my hijab. There's a lot less was was. So if you want to pray that sunnah prayer, go praise Habibi, who's stopping you? <laughs> who's stopping you, you know? So pray your extra sunnah, pray the extra rakats, and um, there is a hadith. It's like, I think if you pray like every single like sunnah prayer, uh, like regularly though, not just like one day, regularly, Allah, let me confirm though, I'm, I'm not trying to lie on God, that's but, you know? I was gonna read this, I was gonna read, like, find what I was looking for on this Instagram, and guess what? I was already on the Instagram. Godder of Allah, man. Godder of Allah. Plan of Allah. I think. What the? Okay, never mind. Plan of Allah. <laughs> Here's a hadith. Whoever prays 12 rakahs in a day and a night, a house will be built for him in paradise. Four before Zur and two after it. Two rakas after Maghrib, two rakas after Isha, and two rakas before Fajr prayer. And this hadith has been determined sahih. No, okay, dude, alright. I'm going to tell you this straight up, alright? Don't, don't, okay. Not everybody's going to be able to handle 12 rakats, okay? Every single day. 12 extra rakats every day because they already have, there are already five daily prayers. None of those daily prayers, two of them are four. So that's eight rakats already for like... Dhuhr and Asr, oh, I forgot Isha, though now like 12 rakats, and then Fajr, 14 rakats, and um, what else, Maghrib, so 17 rakats total. That's a, that's a lot of salah, don't like, don't feel pressured to do that. If you can, absolutely, if, you're a, if your iman is high enough, if you are strong enough to do so, please do, but don't, don't like, don't be like, if you can handle it, that's a different story, but don't. If you know you can't handle it, or if you're pretty sure you can't handle it, do not try to do that all in one. Take it day by day. Build it up, inshallah, right? Worship Allah, build it up. Don't just like start, boom, 12, one day, because if you do it like that, it's not going to last too long, you know? If you if you start off with zero, sunnah rakats, and you just go like, boom, all 12, how long do you think it's going to last? You're going to run out of gas. All right, continuing on down the list, three make dua and this i'm basing this on an ayah of the quran it's 40 60. so surah 40 ayah 60. this is a translation of the quran interpretation because the quran the word of allah is the arabic quran but there are different interpretations of it but i'm gonna pull some up and maybe i'll put some on the screen inshallah and maybe i'll even put up a recitation because i feel like i could get some good deeds for me listening to quran inshallah Hold up. Allah billahi min shaitan rajim. And your Lord says, Call upon me, I will answer you. Surely those who are too proud for my service shall soon enter hell abased. I know, like, I talked about hell, but you know, you call, call upon Allah, right? He'll answer you. He doesn't even specify who he's talking about. It's just the person who calls upon him. Doesn't matter if you're Jewish, doesn't matter if you're a Christian, doesn't matter if you're Muslim. If you call on Allah, Allah will answer you. Bottom line. So, number four, I think most of us know that um, seeking knowledge is an obligation, it's obligatory on like a Muslim. So, during the month of Ramadan, as you're likely staying inside your house majority of the time, 
might as well look up some PDFs of some Islamic books, learn some, do some tafsir, read more Quran, use your own brain to ponder upon what Allah might be saying in the Quran. What better time to gain knowledge than in Ramadan, you know? You should obviously make time for it for the rest of the time, but in Ramadan, you should have extra time to gain that knowledge. And maybe you could even use that knowledge as Sadaqa Jaliya to benefit others after you and gain good deeds even when you're dead. Number five, give charity. And if you need some motivation, ch charity does not decrease your wealth. I know it seems like it does, but there's a hadith. I'm not exactly sure what Rasulullah means, but he could mean that like by giving more charity, you gain more good deeds. And that's definitely not going to de decrease your wealth in the sense of good deeds. And even then, if you, if you want to get more money, you should give charity. I think there might be something about that in the Quran, but I was listening to a lecture about Yasmin Majahid, and she was like, it might sound sort of like contradictory, but if you want to gain money, you should give charity. And I'll leave that lecture down in the description, inshallah. Speaking of charity, speaking of charity now, my friend Samantha J. Boyle, she's doing um, a, a project, a well building project in Afghanistan, and um, she's, she's raising money currently to get 2,200? 2,200 Australian dollars to build a well and hopefully you'll donate to help this cause Imagine how much how many good deeds you can get from just getting someone But anyways, imagine how many good deeds you can get by providing people by being part of the process to Wow, my eyes just popped out of my head by being part of the process to provide people water to perform wudu by providing people um, Water to break their fast with by providing people to drink water with by just removing the hardship from someone, you know? Subhanallah. Imagine, even that water could be used to grow a tree and you could reap reward from that tree just because it provides someone shade or it, like gives um, someone food, you know? Subhanallah. There's so many good deeds that you can reap from this. Why wouldn't you want to donate even a dollar? Even a dollar is good enough because you're still part of the process.